Certainly, the last um, 20 to 30 years have seen a large increase in movement of people, capital and goods across the world. Um, but certainly also we can expect these uh, migration pressures to become stronger in the future. Essentially, there are going to be three driving forces uh, of the increase uh, in migration flows, uh, uh, which will be in large part between less developed uh, into developed country. The first is the wage income differential between uh, uh, rich and poor, or country of destination and country of origin. Uh, this wage differential has increased significantly in the last uh, 25 years. It has uh, uh, gone from $10,000 uh, in real term per year to $17,000 in 25 years, and is expected to continue growth. The second force, the second global force that will increase this pressure is a demographic force. The country of emigration, so the poor country, have a larger share of their population that is young and uh, the richer country have a smaller share and they are rapidly aging. So young worker will continue to potentially move uh, to the richer countries. And the third force has to do with the economic dynamics of the richer countries. So there are some uh, uh, services and occupation whose demand will increase in the next 20 to 30 years uh, because uh, uh, the Western population is aging and women are joining the labor force. In particular, uh, services such as uh, um, child care, care of the elderly, uh, restaurant care, uh, driver. These are manual, physical intensive occupations uh, whose demand is increasing, but whose supply, because typically the people who supply this type of labor are less educated, is uh, shrinking in the rich country. And these are the typical occupation in which immigrants find jobs. The demand for this will increase and the supply from people in rich country will decline. And so this is the third uh, natural force that will drive an increase in immigration. So all these three things projecting forward will likely increase the migration pressure between developing and developed countries. It is very useful to look at the current composition of immigrants uh, um, into rich country and in particular into the US. So the um, profile of immigrant in the US uh, um, has a, a bimodal distribution in the sense that there is a large inflow of immigrants at low level of education uh, a, uh, and a relatively small inflow at intermediate level and then a high inflow again at high and very high level of education. Namely, there are a lot of workers who come without a high school degree and they are the ones that typically fill those occupations that I mentioned before. Um, physical, manual intensive uh, services and jobs whose demand will increase and supply will shrink. And then there are essentially the scientists and engineers. There is going to be ever more a competition for brains in the world because science and engineering are the driving force of economic development. So this bimodal distribution of immigrant actually uh, serves uh, the receiving country pretty well. If you look at the United States, most of the US born worker have actually a level of education which is intermediate, some high school, high school or some college. And most of the immigrant will not therefore compete directly with this, but will fill those type of occupation that this group demand and that can complement them. And at the high end of the spectrum, will, they will provide that brain power for science and technology that is needed to increase productivity. So uh, uh, this current profile um, uh, is likely to be maintained and as the mobility of high skilled increases probably uh, um, in the future and if the mobility of lesser skilled is allowed this u-shape will continue and maybe will strengthen itself. My work focuses on the economic impact of immigration, in particular on the impact of immigration on uh, employment, wages, investment and productivity of the receiving uh, economy. There is uh, sometimes this uh, um, popular perception that immigrants take away some jobs uh, that are not there any longer for the natives. So the truth is that um, each large and developed economy is a place where there are a lot of uh, uh, jobs created and distracted every month. There is what economists call the churning of jobs. 
And uh, in this churning, new people are essentially new opportunities because they come in, an immigrant that come in with somewhat different skills than natives are going to create opportunity for investment and enterprise that take advantage of that. So uh, think for a second about uh, um, a typical company in the United States, a construction company in the United States. So this company needs some construction worker, some construction supervisor, some clerk and some construction engineers. And uh, this old uh, group of workers um, in the 60s uh, was uh, staffed by US born. Then immigrants come in and as we were saying before, they come in mostly as the level of construction worker and some as construction engineer, in fact, some of these highly uh, skilled. So this generates the opportunity for creating more a new construction company, given that there is this supply of skills, and this supply of these two types of skills will increase the demand for the intermediate skill, which will be provided by Americans. So the Americans that US born, that used to be construction worker in the 60s, now with some experience and better knowledge of the language and of the local networks, become construction supervisors and immigrants become construction workers. So this bumps them up a little bit in the skill scale with a positive effect on wages. And also at the high end, immigrants specialize likely in being construction engineer, but the construction manager, clerk, supervisor who needs to interact with the public and needs to have a knowledge of the language and on the local economy still is likely to be American. So these both effects are going to promote the specialization of American into skills uh, which are language intensive, interaction intensive, where they are relatively productive and they will put uh, immigrants into skills and occupation where they are relatively productive. So with the economy working and everybody following their comparative advantage, the inflow of immigrants will likely generate complementarities and positive impact on total employment, investment and productivity of the firms. This, my work says, is what seems to have happened in the last 20 to 25 years in the United States and in part in Europe. So the principle is the same. However, there is one difference between US and Europe and mainly uh, is that uh, the European labor market is more structure rigid and more insider outsiders than the US, namely construction, to stick with the construction example, construction worker are much more likely to be protected by very strong contracts and union in Europe than in the US. So this makes it harder uh, for that mechanism to work, for, for uh, European workers to reallocate themselves into new occupation in response of the, to the inflow of immigrants. So many European construction workers have more tried to defend themselves as a group rather than take advantage of the inflow of immigrants and become supervisor or uh, uh, take other jobs in there. So the consequence of that mostly in Europe has been that there has been larger unemployment level among immigrants, so immigrants have a harder time to enter the labor market and in part they displace previous immigrants given that uh, the native have this protection and they tend to be rather a closed group rather than an open group. And this has generated uh, lower benefits for the uh, economy and I would say also from a potentially social point of view a little bit more, a little less integration and a little bit more of marginalization of some of these low skilled immigrants who have an employment pro problem and uh, um, events in Paris, France uh, uh, last year and a couple of years ago where these people live in the suburbs and had some uh, uh, social issue, maybe in part consequence of this lack of economic integration. So the American system of flexible market and uh, 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 frequent job change uh, has worked pretty well to, um, to cash, I would say, on this benefit that the immigrants have brought in. I was mentioning these three forces that determine migration. So those, it's as if those three forces determine the pressure of immigrants to come in. But then the receiving country keeps the gate uh, at the entry and can decide how much of this 
uh, immigrants, potential immigrants, to allow or not. And the immigration law, in a sense, how strict or how open is an immigration law is a measure of how open is the gate, in a way. So you would expect that both the pressure coming from income differential and demographics and the immigration law both have an effect of immigration. My work uh, analyzes migration from 75 sending countries all over the world into 14 OECD countries for uh, the year from 1980 to 2005, so 25 years. And what we find there is that uh, uh, first, the most important determinant of uh, flows of immigration into OECD country is the wage differential. So um, $1,000 per year more in wage differential will generate 10% larger immigration flows. And keep in mind that in the last 20 years, as I was saying, this gap has increased by $7,000. So that would have generated uh, a, an effect of 70% increase in immigration. Immigration laws are also important, and some countries have used them to counteract this uh, effect of wages, but even the countries that have used them in the toughest way, so we quantify in our sample Japan is the one who has toughened their immigration laws the most, even countries that have increased the tightness of their entry, they've not even increased enough to counterbalance the effect. So they have experienced an increase in immigration as well. Um, every time that a uh, tighter uh, immigration law is passed, on average, we estimate in our sample, immigration flows are decreased by about 6%, 6 to 8%. Um, the bottom line of this is that uh, the economic and demographic forces seem, seem to be strong enough that unless country really tighten drastically their immigration law, we will observe an increase in immigration. But the question is, and connecting to the economic impact, why do we want to restrict it so much? Uh, my research suggests that allowing, in fact, a little bit more immigration, there would be a little bit more of beneficial effect for the receiving country, and uh, a massive impact, positive impact on immigrants that increase their income, and possibly on sending country too. There is a long literature on benefit of remittances, potential benefit from return migration with accumulated capital. So it could really be a global improvement if we allow a little bit more mobility of people internationally.